Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Logic Medico. Today's interesting topic is abduction nerve. Why it is called so and what is the action on the eyeball? Everything in detail we'll see. Before that, if you are new to my channel, kindly subscribe to my channel and don't forget to press the bell button in the lower right corner. Okay. Thank you for subscribing. The objectives of today's presentation is Describe the nuclear origin, functional components, intracranial cores of the sixth cranial nerve or abducens nerve, and also to list the branches and name the relevant conditions affecting this nerve. First of all, you should know that there are extraocular muscles. There are four recti muscle and two oblique muscle, and also one muscle which elevates the upper eyelid. Eyelid means palpebrae. Upper eyelid, na upper means superior. So levator palpebrae superioris. Levator means it elevates the upper eyelid. All these extraocular muscles are supplied by these three cranial nerves: the third cranial nerve or the oculomotor nerve, fourth cranial nerve or the trochlear nerve, sixth cranial nerve or the abducens nerve. So this video is based on sixth cranial nerve. There are other videos based on oculomotor and trochlear nerve, which you can see. So all these muscles supply the extraocular muscles. So the four recta are above the eyeball. It is called the superior rectus. It's straight for the eyeball, therefore called rectus. Below the eyeball, it is called inferior rectus. Medial to the eyeball will be called medial rectus, and lateral to the eyeball is called the lateral rectus. So these four muscles are in four directions: above, below, medially towards the midline, and away from the midline. So superior rectus, inferior rectus, medial rectus, lateral rectus. Plural is called as plural word for rectus is recti. The two oblique muscles are this oblique. You can see this. See, it's obliquely oriented to the eyeball. So it's called superior oblique because it's coming from above, like that from below. More muscle. So inferior oblique. So two oblique muscles and four recti muscles. So the nerve supply of this extra ocular muscle. Extra ocular means they are. Outside the eyeball, okay. So all the extraocular muscles are supplied by oculomotor nerve. That is the third cranial nerve, except SO4 LR6. So what is this SO4? Superior oblique. Four means trochlear nerve, fourth cranial nerve. LR6 lateral rectus. LR6 means abducens nerve. So all the extraocular muscles supplied by oculomotor nerve, except SO4 LR6. So you can put that as a your password in your mobile so that you can remember that the eyeball movements there are various movements for the eyeball if you just see the roof of your room that is called elevation of the eyeball it is brought about by superior rectus if you see the floor of your room that's called depression of the eyeball that's brought about by inferior rectus if you see sideways for example right side if you are trying to see the right eye is moving away from the midline so that is called lateral rectus it's called abduction okay So the left eye is moving towards the your nose, na. So that is adduction of the eyeball. That's brought about by medial rectus. So superior rectus elevates the eyeball, inferior rectus depresses the eyeball, medial rectus adducts the eyeball, lateral rectus abducts the eyeball. Whereas superior oblique, if you want to see the tip of your nose, you use superior oblique. The eyeball will go downwards, forwards, and medially. Downwards, forwards, and medially. That is called intorsion. If you want to see one corner of your room, that is called extorsion. It is brought about by inferior oblique. These are the other muscles which are assisting it. Don't worry about that. You remember the primary action of these muscles. So coming to the abducens now as such. Abducens now is the sixth cranial nerve. Okay, there are twelve pair of cranial nerves emerging out of the brain and the cranial cavity. Therefore, called cranial nerve. Bundle of myelinated axon outside the CNS is called as nerve. So it's called sixth cranial nerve. It supplies one of the muscle which moves your eyeball sideways. That is lateral rectus. So one of the eyeball muscle moves uh, the eye to one side, while the other muscle, medial rectus of the other side, moves towards the nose. Don't worry. That is called conjugate eye movement. That is when one eyeball moves to the right side, the other eyeball also. Tries to follow it. That's called conjugate eye movement. Don't worry about that for time being. Just remember the sixth cranial nerve, that is abducens nerve, supplies lateral rectus muscle. 
now why it's called abducent nerve okay so this movement of the eyeball like this okay if you are seeing to one corner there is abduction of this eyeball see the right eye i am talking of there is abduction of this right eye whereas the left eye there is abduction don't worry about this for time being concentrate on one eye the sixth cranial nerve supplies lateral rectus when this muscle contracts there is abduction of the eyeball there is abduction of eyeball so therefore what you can call sixth cranial nerve is, if you carefully observe here abduction na abducent because lateral rectus muscle the muscle which this nerve supplies will bring about abduction in the eyeball so we can simply name that nerve as a abducent nerve isn't it interesting and easy to remember now yes it will be so sixth cranial nerve is therefore called as abducent nerve so this sixth cranial nerve it supplies the lateral rectus muscle which is the abductor of the eyeball therefore it is called abducent now here is the nerve it is coming out of the pontu medullary junction then passes through the superior orbital fissure enters the orbit supplies the lateral rectus contraction of this moves this eye sideways that is away from the midline therefore called abduction therefore the nerve is called abducent come out of the functional components of this abducent nerve it's a somato motor nucleus it's a motor nucleus meaning supplying the muscle somato means body wall eyeball is there in the body only na proprioceptive sensations from the lateral rectus muscle is carried to the mesencephalic nucleus of the trigeminal cranial nerve okay fifth cranial nerve that means proprioception means position sense even if you close your eyelid you can notice that your eyeball is front or above or below like that so like that you can notice when it is on side also na so that is called proprioceptive sense it doesn't mean it just means the position sense coming to the deep origin of the abducens nerve the abducens nerve is origins from abducens nucleus sorry for the spelling nucleus e should come this side abducens nucleus so here is a correct spelling abducens nucleus so this abducens nucleus is situated in the floor of the fourth ventricle okay the facial nerve nucleus is just anterior lateral to this the axons of the facial nerve nucleus nucleus is collection of neuronal cell body okay the axons forms the nerve the facial nerve fiber winds around the abducens nerve nucleus creating an elevation in the floor of the fourth ventricle it is called as facial colliculus facial colliculus because actually formed by abducens nucleus which is winded around by facial nerve facial nerve emerges sideways and it emerges at the ponto medullary junction at the junction between the pons and the olive of the middle oblongata whereas the abducens nerve nucleus which is situated in the floor of the fourth ventricle in the pons the lower pons emerges straight forward you can see that passing through the medial meniscus passing through the trapezoid body or the corpus trapezoidium through the pontine nucleus it emerges out at the ponto medullary junction at the junction between the lower part of the pons and the pyramid of the medulla that is a course so that is about the course within the within the pons okay now after emerging out that's called the superficial origin after emerging out of the ponto medullary junction at the junction between the lower part of the pons and the upper part of the medulla at the level of pyramid this travels forward and turns like this and then medially and then enters superior orbital fissure where it gains access towards the orbit ultimately it ends by supplying this muscle lateral rectus but here you have to understand the course properly please observe here your pons is here okay this is the position of your pons so the intracranial course of this abducens now it first travels forwards and downwards reaches this area just behind the dorsum cellae of the sphenoid bone then takes a turn the lateral turn is there okay it is bending again second time it's bending now it is travels within the cavernous sinus that you can see here so within the cavernous sinus obviously it's a venous sinus venous blood will be there within that one red color pipe is there it's called internal carotid artery just inferior and lateral to that one yellow color wire is there here that's called abducens now see so here it is traveling within the cavernous sinus a blue color swimming pool called as cavernous sinus it's a venous sinus related to the internal carotid artery after traveling inferolateral to the internal carotid artery after traveling forward like this then it again takes a bend okay 
why this bend is there all this logic i will tell you please listen till the end it takes one more bend medially then it curves forwards and laterally through the superior orbital fissure it goes further laterally in the orbit because it has to supply lateral rectus as simple as that so it passes see here please see here carefully it passes in the intermediate compartment this is a superior orbital fissure it is divided into three compartments by common tendinous ring of zin superior rectus comes from above inferior rectus comes from below lateral rectus comes laterally medial rectus comes medially this is optic foramen this is optic nerve of thalamic artery don't worry about that superior orbital fissure it in the superior orbital fissure in the intermediate compartment if you notice carefully there is upper division and lower division of oculomotor nerve between the two there is one nasociliary nerve branch of ophthalmic division of trigeminal nerve don't worry about that just see more laterally you can see this more laterally this is the midline okay more laterally you can notice that there is a one nerve see please see the labeling abducens nerve why it's going laterally you can see the logic it's going laterally because it has to supply lateral rectus so you can see that it's passing through the superior orbital fissure in the intermediate compartment more on the lateral aspect because ultimately it has to go laterally to supply lateral rectus so the peculiarities of this nerve the sixth cranial nerve or abducens nerve it changes the direction three times because it has got two bends okay please observe here bend okay first the change in direction bend again one bend is there so three times it's changing the direction two acute angle bends are there i agree with that two acute angle bends will be there wow. so if you if you if you have a doubt why there should be bend in this nerve see when you moving your eyeball just think there is no bend okay there is no bend in the abducens nerve it is straight like this okay so it is straightly it's going on supplying lateral rectus when you move your eyeball sideways don't you think this nerve will get stretched and torn i mean it will tear na if you move your eyeball upwards downwards okay so there should be medially lateral there should be some amount of hinging so that it permits the eyeball movement freely without tearing the or damaging the nerve that is the logic behind why there is bending in that abducens nerve the communication of the abducens nerve within the cavernous sinus venous sinus it communicates with sympathetic nervous plexus which is running around the internal carotid artery and with the ophthalmic nerve it's a branch of trigeminal nerve okay it's a sensory communication the central connections are similar to oculomotor nerve nucleus you can see one more video on the oculomotor nerve so it oculomotor nerve nucleus will be connected to cerebral cortex even this nerve is connected to cerebral cortex so that is called cortico nuclear or cortico bulbar fibers so it controls oculomotor nerve even the medial longitudinal fasciculus connected to oculomotor nerve and also this nerve abducens nerve the oculomotor nerve will be connected to pretectal nucleus but this nerve which we are talking the sixth cranial nerve abducens nerve nucleus will not have any connection with pretectal nucleus this is involved with accommodation and light reflex which is concerned only with oculomotor nerve not with abducens nerve there is one more nucleus is called para abducens nucleus para means by the side of abducens nucleus which is obviously in the pons by the side of the abducens nucleus there is one more nucleus para abducens nucleus projects fibers to oculomotor nucleus trochlear nucleus obviously because it has to coordinate the movement with other muscles conjugate eye movement and with medial longitudinal fasciculus suddenly in a dark room if someone flashes a light you will turn reflexly your neck towards that area your eye towards that area that is because of this fasciculus called as medial longitudinal fasciculus very important for ocular reflex r e f l e x visual reflex okay coming to the last aspect the applied anatomy of this so ultimately this uh, abducens nerve supplies which muscle lateral rectus muscle okay in applied anatomy see what happens normally normally both the muscles medial rectus supplied by oculomotor nerve lateral rectus supplied by abducens nerve are pulling this eyeball with equal strength so where will the eyeball go it will not go medially it will not go laterally because both the muscles and both the nerves oculomotor nerve is intact abducens nerve is intact so it will remain in neutral position so what happens what happens if the if at all if at all the person's lateral rectus gets paralyzed the unopposed action of the medial rectus will pull the eyeball towards the midline towards your nose therefore it's called as convergent squint it can also be called as medial squint so why this happens i'll repeat 
damage to abdus and now damage to the pons or damage to this nerve supplying that lateral rectus muscle results in paralysis of lateral rectus okay so paralysis of lateral rectus the person should not be able to see you to one side sir correct i agree but in addition to that the person has got squint why why this convergent squint when there is paralysis of this lateral rectus definitely it will not move towards that side but this muscle medial rectus which is supplied by oculomotor nerve which is still functional it will pull the eyeball towards the midline this is called medial squint or convergent squint which is characteristic of sixth cranial nerve damage that means lateral rectus is paralyzed also if both the eyes if both right and left eye are parallel to one another they will have one vision but if one eye is seeing one visual field and another eye is seeing another visual field like this the person will have double vision it's called as diplopia that is the another clinical symptom which a person with six cranial nerve palsy will have next condition any involvement of the brain or the meninges or csf will cause raised intracranial pressure so whenever there is a raised intracranial pressure intracranial tension will be raised because of the long course of this nerve through the cisterna pontis cisterna pontis is a dilated area of the subarachnoid space next to the pons cisterna means it's like a swimming pool pontis means next to pons because of the sharp bending at the upper border of the petrous part of the temporal bone there will be stretching of the nerve due to the downward shift of the brain stem this is just explanation why there is a abducens nerve damage whenever there is a raised intracranial pressure tension there are 12 cranial nerves na any now can get, get can get damaged but more commonly abducens nerve is involved why reason number 1 long intracranial course reason number 2 sharp bending i showed you already all these things sharp bending which is happening because of this raised intracranial pressure brain is tending brain stem is trying to go down okay but the nerve is remaining there only so it's getting stretched right so when it's getting stretched there is a abducens nerve palsy or sixth cranial nerve palsy then there is a paralysis of this muscle lateral rectus so when there is paralysis of lateral rectus unopposed action of the medial rectus pulls the eyeball towards the midline and that is called as convergent squint okay and the, because both the eyeballs are not seeing the same field of vision the person will also have diplopia so you can see this child see this eye is seeing straight but this eye i call is turned medially okay and the child has got uh, unopposed action of the medial rectus obviously there is a paralysis of lateral rectus so this squint or strabismus is a medial squint or the convergent squint why this is happening due to damage of abducens nerve abducens nerve palsy any condition which raises intracranial tension the person will have this kind of symptom and uh, you are giving treatment you are giving some diuretic to reduce the pressure to reduce the csf tension what am what happens how do you know that whether the patient is improving with your treatment if the squint is getting reduced if the eyeball comes back to its neutral position that means the intracranial tension is reducing you can also use for follow up so that is about the abduction now in detail thank you for watching my channel kindly subscribe to my channel and press the bell button here also you can see in adult also there is a abduction now palsy okay thank you for watching this video and learning from it kindly press the subscribe button and the bell button to get the latest notification of videos which i upload thank you once again for watching this video don't forget to press the thumbs up button okay